Hi, I'm Brian Tepper, Engagement Manager for Strategic Accounts at Datart. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and welcome to our session on Enterprise Retail Challenges in an AI Power World. This is the annual IT nonstop by Datart. Today, we are going to explore how AI can add value to businesses and help enterprise size companies leverage Gen AI for faster and more cost effective processes. Joining us is our Steam partner, Big Commerce, and we are here for a conversation with Liz O'Neill, Product Marketing Manager, B2B AI Data at Big Commerce. Hi, Liz. What role you have? <laughs> it's great to have you here with us. <laughs> Thank you. I know you really you. are into Gen AI, so there will be a lot to learn from you. Uh, I'm probably going to ask you a lot of questions, so let's start with the first one. <laughs> Liz, uh, could you give us a little bit of your background? What do you do at BigCommerce? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much, uh, the art team, for, for having myself and BigCommerce um, as part of this. My background is actually in retail merchandising, and I've been in the tech industry for a little, about 10 years, and I've always been passionate about innovation. Uh, I've been in BigCommerce for about three and a half years now, started out in partner management and made a career switch into product marketing to le learn a new area of the business. And my focus areas in that, uh, in the product marketing team, like you said, are, are B2B AI and data. Uh, but what I love most about being on the PMM team is working closely and collaborating with product and engineering on new and emerging technologies. Oh, nice. And, and what was the reason for your interest in, for your interest in AI, like both in, in a general context and specifically in retail? Yeah, absolutely. I've always been interested in artificial intelligence, AI, because of its potential to revolutionize the way we live and work. AI truly has the ability to automate tasks, make predictions and solve problems in ways that were previously impossible. Uh, I'm personally fascinated by the potential of AI to make the world a better place. And I'm excited to be part of the field that is developing the technology. Um, particular of interest in AI specifically, um, really is about improving the customer experience, personalized marketing campaigns, optimizing and operations. Um, for example, AI can be used to provide personalized product recommendations, optimize pricing, and also fraud detection. Now, so that, that was like my first, like the next question, how does AI apply to retail? Um, if Fair. you highlight, if you could highlight the current state of AI capabilities that are available in the retail industry. Yeah, if I think about the past year, right, like AI kind of came in like a wrecking ball. I think a lot of uh, enterprise retailers are starting to figure out how to adopt Gen AI. So I think first and foremost, what we're going to be seeing is a lot of that in 2024. But what we're seeing now is uh, Stitch Fix and eBay are using Gen AI for product descriptions. Uh, Babylist is using Gen AI to write email subject lines. New Egg and Amazon is using Gen AI to summarize customer reviews. Uh, and then also Urban STEM uh, is using it to create images uh, with Gen AI. Um, and, and something I also saw, uh, I want to say a couple weeks ago, was Amazon, Amazon actually upgraded their ad suite with new uh, data, with a new data clean room, uh, with an AI image generator, G yeah, with an AI image generator, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, nice. And speaking of like practical application, what recent cases can you share regarding the implementation of AI in, let's say, routine tasks within the retail industry and what processes have been automated, uh, automated recently? Yeah, I think some of the, you know, what we're kind of seeing in some of the recent cases of AI, and again, this is kind of all over the past year, so I still feel like there's a lot for us to learn. Um, but specifically, automated checkout is becoming increasingly common in supermarkets and convenience stores. We all use that almost every day. Um, I'm seeing AI algorithms used to optimize inventory levels, uh, as well as detect fraudulent transactions. I think that's been around for uh, a little while. And then something I'm also seeing, too, is more customer service chatbot, chatbots that are asking you know, FAQs or resolving common issues. So we're seeing a lot of that today in some recent cases. Totally, yeah, yeah. And are there any cases that became inspirational for you? Like, have you uh, come across with examples where AI has completely changed the way business is done and, and you just love that improvement? So, uh, fun story, I want to say beginning of 2020, I took my, um, my partner and my son up to New York 
and we stayed uh, in Midtown, and I believe there was an Amazon Go. And we were so excited because we are in Orlando to where we don't really get newer technologies uh, because Orlando is mostly for tourists. Um, and so Amazon Go, and so we woke up one morning, we were excited, and just the simplicity of walking into an Amazon Go, it uses the AI-powered cameras and sensors to track what we were doing. Um, even picking it up, putting it down, putting it back. Um, and so what was cool was the unique ability, not only like with my family to experience that for the first time, um, but the simplicity of the shopping experience, right? So I pick up what I what we were going to buy and we just walk out. It's, you know, automatically charging my account for any items that we take, um, which I, I absolutely love. Uh, I've seen Nike use it to optimize, use AI to optimize uh, their supply chain from production planning to delivery routing. Uh, I've also seen Walmart use AI algorithms to dynamically adjust prices uh, based on demand, competitor pricing, and other factors. We're seeing that with a lot of the, the large retailers. Um, and then also lastly, uh, a really cool one is Sephora's virtual makeup assistant. They use AI to analyze customer selfies and recommend makeup products that match their skin tone and preferences. And I really am definitely a big fan of, of Sephora's app. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Really awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And if we move into the future, like what new AI, AI offerings is e-commerce currently developing at this moment? Great. Yeah, great question. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we actually launched our first Gen AI um, product description generator. It's called Big AI Copywriter. Um, and what I love about it is it's differentiated from the others out there in the sense that it lets brands and retailers express their brand's voice and create SEO friendly product descriptions that convert. So that's actually available now in our big commerce app marketplace. It's free for any uh, customer who is on the big commerce platform. Uh, in terms of future offerings, we're going to be um, uh, launching a closed beta with uh, Google, uh, Google's product recommendations uh, this this quarter uh, as well into next. And then coming, thinking about 2024, uh, we're going to be investing in big AI quotes for our uh, awesome B2B edition offering. And that's targeted for Q2 in 2024. And we have some other things planned too, but we are a public company, so I can't really mention those, but yeah. we actually have an awesome AI partner network. Uh, we actually currently have 22 big commerce um, partners that are in our app marketplace. There's a, an AI category. And what I love about them is they level up our offering, meaning the sense or enhance. Um, so they offer uh, a suite of cutting edge, cutting edge AI tools and solutions, including chatbots, product descriptions, recommendations, search, and mer merchandising. I think we're going to start to see a lot more AI partners build uh, different applications using Gen AI uh, for for big commerce customers. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and in in the context of personalization in retail? How does AI help to create like tailored shopping experiences? Uh, do you have any examples where uh, AI driven personalization had a remarkable impact on, on the customer engagement and also the satisfaction? Yeah. Um, I think for me, like shopping experiences is, is, is key, right? Um, and it, you know, AI does play a pivotal role in creating the tailored shopping experience by leveraging that vast amount of customer data to gain deeper insights to their preferences, behaviors, and purchasing patterns. So think about the context of you or I shopping on a website. If it understands my needs and preferences, it's more relevant and going to recommend, uh, you know, products or content that's related to my historical journey. So for me, that personalized shopping experience is key. And this is a data-driven approach that enables retailers to personalize various aspects of the shopping journey, including product recommendations, marketing campaigns, promotions, and even in-store experiences. I won't name a lot of the retailers, but I have mentioned them previously. They get it right. They, they understand how important personalization is for a shopper. And I'm just super excited to, to see where the Gen AI uh, fits into the retail a retailer strategy to create uh, a better shopping experience for everyone. Mm, nice, nice. And and focusing in on AI in retail organizations, right? Uh, what are the challenges these organizations usually face in implementing AI, and how can we assure them that like it will lead to success in the long run? 
Great, great question. Again, this is kind of all over the past year. Uh, a lot of the, the completely AI landscape has changed, but I think when I think about um, your question, it's data quality and availability. You know, the AI algorithms require high quality and well-structured data to train and operate efficiency. Um, also, uh, the lack of AI expertise. You know, many retailers lack the in-house expertise to develop, implement, and maintain the AI solutions. Uh, I also believe that, you know, there's a culture of change and resistance. Um, you know, AI does require significant changes within, you know, different businesses and decision making. And this can lead resistance from other employees who are accustomed to, to the traditional methods and may not understand the benefits of AI. So I feel like if the explainability and the transparency is presented in a way um, that helps them understand and be able to use uh you know it effectively to help them make better business decisions i feel like you'll probably get more of a buy-in mm -hmm. yeah from Absolutely. other employees yeah thank you thank you um i think this is like my favorite question i have for you uh, <laughs> so ai is now you know in the mouth of every person uh every business so how can companies be sure they have found the best scenario, not just for the sake of using AI. And in what cases, if any, would you not recommend moving to AI or using AI? I love this question too. Um, you know, AI is a hot topic and many companies are eager to adopt in hopes of gaining not only competitive edge, but as their differentiator. But I think it's super important and crucial to approach AI adoption with caution and consideration ensuring that it aligns with business goals and doesn't create unnecessary complexities. Um, you know, for example, I would recommend, you know, identifying different areas where AI can bring significant improvements, such as automation of repetitive tasks, enhancing customer experiences, or optimizing the decision-making process. Uh, also measurable outcomes. So define and set clear measurable goals for AI. Um, such as customer satisfaction, operational mm -hmm. efficiency, or re revenue growth. Um, and then also AI should, should be complementary. It's not going to replace, um, you know, human expertise is still needed. So it's ensuring that human oversight and decision-making are still maintained, especially in sensitive areas involving ethics, compliance, and customer relationships. Uh, in terms of things that you know, enterprise retailers should probably not recommend is that, mm -hmm. you know, the limited data availability or the unstructured data, uh, I feel like that's definitely going to be key, but the complexity of the unstructured data as well. And then also, you know, high stakes decisions, you know, AI should be used with caution when making critical decisions that have significant con uh, consequences, such as medical diagnosis or financial investments, uh, you know, also human oversight and risk mitigation are also essential. And then lastly, the limited budget, budget and resources. So if you don't have a team that's dedicated to support this, you know, Gen AI transformational uh, journey, then I would probably look to, you know, a third party or a vendor to help the enterprise, enterprise retailers and brands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. And uh, uh, looking ahead again, uh, what disruptions do you foresee in, in the retail industry and uh, how might that change the user experience or jobbing, you know, uh, patterns? Like, uh, are are there areas where AI might not be disruptive in the upcoming years? I don't think so, <laughs> to answer your last one. Um, I feel like it's disruptive and it's disruptive in a good way. I think the next, next big disruption in the retail industry will be the widespread adoption of generative AI which can create new content such as text, images, and code. It also has the potential to revolutionize the way e-commerce businesses operate, meaning improving the customer experience, really reducing costs and increasing sales. Um, specifically, I think the rise of AI-powered shopping assistance would also be the next big disruption, which could really help customers find to find and also purchase products without ever having to visit a physical store. So it's like your own one-on-one -on -one shopping assistant, and I believe it was probably 2018 or 2019 Levi's 
did it very well. And it was find your perfect pair of jeans. And you, it was just engaging and just the easiest chat bot to navigate. And it personalized that type of jeans based off your, your preferences. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, mm -hmm. With the retail industry overall, I feel like it's on the cusp, cusp of a significant disruption, which is driven by the techno technological advancements you know, changing the consumer behavior in the evolving economic landscape for things like personalized shopping experiences, frictionless, frictionless checkout and payments, voice powered shopping. And then one of my favorites is definitely the immersive retail environments like AR, VR, allowing consumers to virtually visualize products in their homes or try on the clothes without physically wearing them is pretty awesome. So I'm super excited about that one. Yeah, yeah, I tried that one uh, on my last trip to US, and I tried like a pair of sneakers, you know, and it was like yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I love and, it. and and given the rapid evolution of AI, uh, do you have any valuable lessons to share or insights that have impacted like the company's approach? I mean, I'm talking about big commerce uh, that have impacted your approach towards uh, future developments in the retail industry? Yeah, uh, great question. You know, we've we've spent, I want to say, you know, six months, you know, really as a team, just kind of figuring out where does Gen I fit in, you know, our strategy and our, um, you know, internal and external and to our, our brands and retailers. And I can say that we've learned that high quality data, data is essential for developing and deploying effective AI solutions. Um, this kind of goes back to the poor quality of data or unstructured data that can lead to inaccurate predictions, biased results and unreliable models. So it's definitely important that data uh, is key and you get that right. Um, we've also recognized the importance of explainability and transparency when using AI algorithms. As it becomes more complex, it's crucial to understand how these models make decisions and how they impact consumers and shoppers in different businesses. So that's definitely key. Uh, we've, al we've also emphasized that AI should not replace human expertise, but rather complement it. Human judgment, creativity, and emotional intelligence are still essential in many aspects of retail, particularly in areas such as customer service, product design, and trend forecasting. So. I think there's a lot we still have to learn, but those are some some of our our lessons learned um, on how to get it right for for generative AI. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think like AI yeah. is a tool that we should use. For example, when you uh, use I don't know ChatGPT or any tools to, for example, write product descriptions. So mm -hmm. you can use it as a point of uh, a starting point, you know, like an um, inspiration. And then you just, yep. if it's okay, if you want to change it, if you need anything like different, if it's not targeted for your customer. But yeah, I, I agree. Like it's a tool for us. We don't have to like take it or not. <laughs> it's not black yeah. and white here. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Liz, uh, what else can be enriched with AI capabilities? Uh, great question. I know I talked about it uh, earlier, but you know we are seeing a couple retailers um, that are, are using Gen AI, um, and that's Stitch Fix and eBay for product descriptions. Uh, and actually, Big Commerce we launched our Big AI Copywriter, uh, which is product description generator uh, using Google Cloud's Veritex AI. We're also seeing Baby List using Gen AI to write email subject lines and Newegg and Amazon using Gen AI to summarize customer reviews, as well as Urban Stems creates images with Gen AI, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I feel like we're gonna start seeing more AI um, being used to develop new products and services that are tailored to the needs of the customers and also dynamic pricing. So AI can be used to optimize, uh, optimize pricing strategies based on market conditions, like talked about earlier with uh, Walmart doing that really well, but with demographics and inventory levels, competitor pricing and customer behavior. Um, another cool thing that we did last month is we actually partnered with Spresso AI to bring AI pricing optimization solutions to our customers, which is really going to help them max maximize profit margins and conversions. And we have a few that are almost, we have a few uh, customers that are almost live using Spresso AI. And I'm super excited to see how 
Spresso AI will help them optimize their pricing strategies to increase their sales over this holiday season. Uh, so, you know, AI could also be used to create more targeted and effective marketing and demand gen campaigns. And then also there's AI powered dynamic forecasting, which can help retailers better predict demand for products, which can reduce inventory and improve availability. And lastly, AI powered supply chain optimization to really help retailers optimize their supply chains by predicting demand, routing shipments efficiently, and managing inventory levels. And this really can help reduce cost and improve efficiency for all. Uh, Liz, uh, to sum up, uh, what we are looking into the future of AI in the next uh, one or two years? Yeah, I think AI is going to become more pervasive in the retail industry within the next one to two years. Um, we can expect to see more AI powered features and solutions emerge from big commerce uh, over, over on the industry and also third party vendors. Uh, for me, I believe that Gen AI has the potential to revolutionize the retail industry by making it easier, more efficient, and more affordable for businesses to serve their, their customers. Right. And Brian, there's a, I have a question for you um, as a male who loves shopping. Um, <laughs> is there any chance that AI will improve the situation with men's shopping? And also, will it will AI make the shopping for men less hateful. Yeah, I think creating like with creating a virtual sofa to wait for your girlfriend. Why is, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, I think like uh, again, I, I love I love shopping. I, I usually you know uh, go for and shop a lot of things. I, I love that. Uh, I love the trends and the and the brands. But I think in general, like. If I have to choose one feature, it would be uh, personalized recommendations, you know, mm. because I think men uh, don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, like deciding and having to choose a hey, this this jean, this color, this size. So maybe and also like of course the the virtual you know fitting room and the chance to try the clothes uh, yourself with your yep. camera and and not having to go, you know to the to the store so yeah yeah I, yeah I think that would be <laughs> really helpful for for me in general yeah so like the virtual personalized shopping assistant right to help you find like your perfect pair of jeans um or sneakers um yeah. I love it and then you know the the immersive retail experience that, that's coming to your point like the AR and VR allowing yeah. you to try things on at home or try you know, furniture uh, as well. So I love that. Yeah, and, and also as you mentioned, I think with the with the makeup, like uh, mm -hmm. having like an assistant, you know, with style suggestions or inspiration. So you don't have to think about uh, what's the trend, exactly. how to combine, you know, uh, different like uh, your jean with your with a t-shirt or anything. Uh, yeah, I think that's the the future for for men shopping. So uh, Liz, uh, what an interesting topic and inspiring conversation. Again, it was a pleasure to talk with you today. Thanks for joining. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how Gen AI will continue to improve businesses and our experience you know, as customers or users. And uh, of course, we at Daytart can help any company to get into that journey. And we have a specific lab for that. And we also have partners like you, like BigCommerce, to contribute to that goal. So, uh, thank you. Um, appreciate you guys. Thank you again so much for having me and look forward to the next one. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you.